This amphibious vehicle is used by hunters and fishermen, and by utility companies and the military. Wide, rugged tyres easily track through mud, snow or rough terrain. When the vehicle is in the water, the tyres' deep treads also function as paddles. This eight-wheeled model can carry six people on land and four in the water. Production begins by welding eight steel sections together to make the driver's seat, then 12 other parts for the vehicle's main frame. This frame will later house the seat, a gas tank, the battery and a storage box. Next, the axle hub is assembled. A robotic press punches five bolts through the components to fuse them. This design keeps the hub lightweight and strengthens the axle for driving on rough terrain. Next, the axle shaft is inserted through the hub. A robotic welding machine then fuses the shaft to one side of the hub. The machine welds the shaft to the hub's other side. This company uses a robot for this important step because it's faster and more precise. Here, a worker reveals some of the vehicle's secrets to functioning in water. Each axle bearing has rubber and steel collars, called flanges. They form a waterproof seal over the axle. The flanges are greased to lubricate them and to keep out dust and water. One of the 16 gaskets is inserted between the flanges. They're made of cork to keep moisture out and grease from escaping. Another flange and a gasket are added, and then a liquid compound is applied to rust-proof the steel shaft. Here, a computer-guided cutting tool carves teeth on a steel ring to create one of the vehicle's 17 gears. Lubricant cools the heat this generates, so that the machine doesn't overheat and break down. When the cutting's complete, robotic arms remove the gear and replace it with a new unshaped ring. Here's how the shift lever changes the gears from neutral to low to high and into reverse. And here's how the clutch will transfer power via a component called the input shaft into the transmission. The transmission is hooked up to the engine and two clutches are slid onto the input shaft. Each one is attached with a bolt and two washers. Then the engine is connected to the transmission with a rubber drive belt encircling the clutches. Two brake calipers connect the brake system to the transmission. The drive belt, clutch system, engine rotations, brakes and steering are all tested. The driver steers the vehicle by slowing or stopping either set of wheels and skidding to one side. To make the vehicle's lower body, a sheet of polyethylene is heated in an oven. After four and a half minutes, at 232 degrees Celsius, the sheet emerges, softened by the heat. An aluminium mould drops down and a vacuum-forming machine stretches the plastic around it, sucking out air from between the two. After the plastic cools for four and a half minutes, the machine lifts the mould, leaving a cavity about the size of a large bathtub. Two workers then move the lower body to an assembly line. They insert the vehicle's main frame, now painted black. Then on the outside, four extensions that'll carry the vehicle's two front and two rear axles are added. These will enable the axles to withstand greater punishment. Eight drive chains are installed onto sprockets on the axle shafts. Then two more are added, linking the transmission to the components that propel the vehicle, the drive system. An end plate is connected to complete the link. The 26 horsepower engine is lowered into the carriage and attached with three bolts. Next, the polyethylene upper body and the wheels are attached. The chains and sprockets are tested. The wheels are twice as wide as most car wheels, but 10 times softer to cushion the ride. On land, this vehicle travels up to 35 kilometers an hour. Top speed in the water is only five kilometers an hour, but hey, you'll make quite a splash.